I'm so excited to read you guys this story. This is The Little Lost Angel. And it was written a long time ago by Angela Field Heath and illustrated by Janet Lara Scott. Long ago, on that first Christmas Eve, when the angels came out from heaven to bring their tidings of great joy, there was a very little angel who slipped out with them. She was so little that she did not sing very well, and, to tell the truth, she didn't quite understand what the angels were singing. Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth, goodwill towards man. Yes, she knew about that. But what was it the beautiful big angel alone was singing? For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. The little angel didn't know what swaddling clothes were. And what, oh what, was a manger? Wondering, she floated down the, to the grassy field below her to wait until the angels finished singing and could take her back to heaven. And in the field, huddled close together, she found the sheep that the shepherds had forgotten. They were so soft, so warm, so quiet that the little angel lay down among them and fell asleep. When she woke up, it was very still. The big angels had gone back into heaven, and the shepherds were hurrying to find the new baby about whom the angels had sung. I'm glad the big star is there, said the little angel, but I wish the big angels had waited for me. I'd better try and find them. I'm sure I can't find my way back to heaven without them. She straightened the crown upon her golden head and picked up her little harp, which had fallen to one side. Then gently spreading her wings, she went out onto the roadside. Why, there's one of the angels now, she cried and hurried then to him. Then why she not flying? She's, she flew for a little bit and then she found a man. But it wasn't an angel she found, only a man. A man walking by himself, his head hung down so that he did not even see the great star. The little angel looked at him. Why don't you sing, she asked. Sing? Why should I sing? What is there to sing about, growled the man. It makes you happy to sing, laughed the little angel. She ran her fingers across the harp That's she was carrying. That's a bad carrying. one. No, he's just sad. And sang softly a little song. There, isn't that pretty? Very, very pretty, said the man, looking at her at last. Here, you take it, then you can sing, she said the little one, putting the harp into his hands. And please, will you tell me if the angels went this way? Angels? Angels? Didn't you see them? asked the little one. Oh, see? Isn't that one of them beyond us? She flew on to look, but alas, it was just a stranger whom she came. A woman this time. Her clothes were rich and gay, but her face was hard and sullen, and she spoke roughly to the little angel. Go away. I'm no fit person for a child to be seen with. Is it because you've lost your crown? asked the angel anxiously, because if you have, you may have mine. And please, could you tell me which way the angels went? Angels, said the woman in a startled voice. She held the crown in her hands. And as she looked at it, long lost tears ran down her face. What is this that is happening to me? She whispered, but the little angel had gone more quickly. Now, that she had no harp to carry and no crown upon her head. So fast did she go that she almost fell upon a little boy sitting by the roadside, crying as though his heart would break. What is that strange sound you're making, little one? asked the angel. I'm crying, the little boy told her. I wanted to see the king, the new king who's in Bethlehem tonight, but they've all gone away and left me. I'm lame, you see. I can't walk fast, and by the time I get there, the king will be gone. A king, said the angel. I thought it was a baby. They said he was a king, said the little boy, and he began to cry again. Take my wings, said the angel. You can't walk very well, so it is you who should have them. She fastened her wings carefully to his shoulders. They were soft, fluttery things that caught the low night breeze and bore the little boy forward in a gentle, rapturous motion. Thank you. Oh, thank you, he called back. 
but the little angel scarcely heard him. She was trying to walk without her wings. She had not known it would be so difficult. She kept falling to the ground, and her tender feet were cut and bruised by the stones in the roadway. But the big star is there, she thought, as she slowly went along. Is it heaven at last? But it was not a light from heaven, she saw, only candles from a home nearby. The angel knocked timidly and stood waiting. A little thing with pleading eyes and tangled golden hair. A woman opened the door, then stood staring at the little angel, unable to believe what she saw. Peter, she whispered back into the room. Peter, come. Do you see what I say? Oh, is it a miracle because we prayed so long? Is this a child sent to us at last? She put her hands out and drew the lost angel to her. She bathed the soiled and bleeding feet and combed the tangled hair. Then she held her close and sang a low song of great joy, and the little angel closed her eyes and dreamed that she was in heaven. When she awoke, it was morning. She had found not heaven but a new home and a mother and father. They so loved her that she almost forgot she had been a little angel. She ran about the fields while the man Peter tended his sheep, and she helped the woman Dorcas make bread and sweep the floor. She played in the meadows and vineyards with the older ch other children, and they loved her because she was so gentle and sweet. Many years passed, and Peter and Dorcas at last grew old and passed away. But the lost angel stayed in their home alone. Now it was she who tended the sheep and gathered the grapes and made the bread. She was friendly to all who came to her door. Many travelers knocked there and always found welcome, food, and rest. They told her about far lands through which they had come and of the people they had met or of whom they had heard. Many of their stories were great ones in the world. They told her of a poet who, sing his, who sang his way straight into the hearts of men. They told of a great-hearted woman who spent her life helping the poor and sinful, and they told her of a leader of the people, lame, it is true, but inspired and beloved. And the angel heard them with a smile. She never knew that the poet was the man whom she had given her harp, and the great-hearted woman was the one who wore her crown, and that the leader of the people was the boy who had taken her wings. <laughs>